Shalom. This week is Parshas Noach. The Haftorah is from Isaiah Nun Dalid Nun Hey. Uh, it's said during the uh, the Shabbos is after uh, Tisha B'av as consolations. It's um, it has two parts to it, more or less. The first part is begins Rani Akaras, a sing out O barren one. Um, and it's a, basically about a uh, repentant sinner that God has abandoned for a short time and um, then has returned to. Uh, the second part is Anisara, which is um, literally the afflicted one, uh, storm tossed, uh, disconsolate, which is dealing basically with a tzaddik who might have made a few small mistakes, basically good. Um, in between them, you have a, um, a quote that says that these days are like the days of the water of Noah, or the days of Noah. Um, and that's the basic bridge, both uh, conceptually and through language, between the Parsha and the Haftorah. Um, the um, idea is that um, concerning the Haftorah, it's consolations after the destruction of the, of, of the temple, and it's basically giving um, the Jewish people encouragement during the time of the exile. In the case of um, the waters of Noah, what you have is uh, the destruction, basically, of the whole world, except for one family, and a good part of the parsha deals with the flood itself, where it says for 150 days the water was very intense on the earth, uh, so to speak, the world was being scrubbed. Um, after that, Noah emerges from the ark with his family, and they build a new world. That, that's the basic idea. Uh, the idea is of um, is actually going away from societal ills. Um, the complaint about the um, previous world is that it was corrupt, uh, sexually, morally, uh, in terms of uh, people were engaged in basically robbery. Uh, it was so much. The it says Hamas, and the idea of Hamas is um, it literally means wrong or injustice of a person who does something that's really dishonest, but he's able to get away with it. That's the basic idea of it. You, you can't recover from him in a court of law. Um, so the, the idea is basically of a corrupt war world. What happens um, after the flood is that Noah takes, um, he had took a, more than a pair of the clean animals, the uh, tahor, and um, he makes a sacrifice for, uh, from them to God, and then God says that he smells the pleasing fragrance, and he says he'll never bring a flood on the world again. Um, the basic idea of that is that a desolation and a, a, a vengeance from heaven of this magnitude will not again happen. Um, there may be punishments and horrible things happening to society, but, but this be it, it will not be. That's the basic idea. Um, the idea of both of the Havtorah and, and of Noah is um, 
abandoning societal ills. The um, idea of Noah is say, when he offers up the the clean animals is he's saying I don't want to have anything to do with the filth that came before me and that has been destroyed. I I, I want a, a clean world. I want a world that is not corrupt. Um, and that's the, I, the, the thing that is pleasing to, uh, to Hashem. Um, the idea is that even a righteous person can be corrupted by the greater society at large. Now you have the um, end of Noah, you have the introduction of Avraham. Now in the next week's portion, what Hashem tells Avraham to do is to leave his, his land, leave his birthplace. It's emphasizing you just have to leave this place and leave your father's house. Okay? Obviously, you have to leave your, your father if you're going away from one place and you're coming to, the, to, to Eretz HaKodesh, the Holy Land. Uh, the idea of this, and the, the commentaries talk about it, they say, you know, work, Azim, that Avraham will not be anything special. But when he comes to, um, to, to, uh, to what will be the land of Israel, he, then he will flourish, then he'll become a very great man. The, the idea is that he has to turn inward, and he has to have a place that is conducive to this. Yet it's not an area that is steeped in corruption. Uh, you have also the example of um, Yitzchak, where uh, Saris says that, uh, that uh, tells Avram that he he must. Uh, basically uh, expel Yishmael and Hagar from uh, their house, uh, Avram's son. And she says that, he, that, the, the, that Yishmael will not inherit with, his, uh, w- with, with Yitzchak. Later on, it says concerning the uh, children of Keturah, when um, Avram remarries after the death of Sarah, that he sent them away from their from Yitzchak. Um, the idea is that Yitzchak can't be under the influence of uh, Yishmael and others while he is impressionable and maturing. Okay, because if he has a older brother that is basically a savage, uh, albeit a believing one, it's going to have an influence on Yitzchak, and he will not achieve the greatness that he really should achieve uh, if he was left on his own. That's the basic idea. And this is the idea of the, the, the period of the exile, that so to work, speak, the world is being scrubbed, and it's a time of introspection. Now, this is also related to the month of Cheshvon. Uh, Parshish uh, Noah falls in the month of Cheshvon, and also the flood started in the month of Cheshvon. And it was actually called Mabul, the word for flood in Hebrew, um, until the um, uh, basically during the first temple period. It mentions in the uh, Book of Kings that Shlomo Hamalech finished the temple during the month of Bul. It drops the M, mem for various reasons. The idea is that, uh, so to speak, uh, conceptually, that we're getting out of one world at this time and 
coming into a new world. And uh, the idea of um, cheshbon, it's related to the Hebrew word cheshbon, and, uh, which means an accounting, that you're supposed to make a um, cheshbon nefesh, a personal accounting, uh, uh, take stock of yourself. And it comes after the um, month of Tishrei and Elul, where you're sounding the shofar and you're saying psalms and you're saying slichot, and then you have uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, and you have Sukkot. It's a, it's it's a lot of things going on, and they are very elaborate. And the idea is that these holidays are supposed to affect you, give you something to think about. You're supposed to learn something from them. And the idea of Cheshvon, which is a, a, a month that is unusual in the Jewish calendar and that it has no Jewish holidays whatsoever, fast days, nothing. Um, that's the, the idea is that this is the month where you think things over and you say, all right, what was corrupt and degenerate from before? Uh, what are the things that I really don't believe uh, in uh, that I might have to take some efforts, but I can get rid of them? I certainly don't want to do them. Um, that, so I, right now, do I have the power to, to uh, get out of these situations. That, that's the basic idea. And to the extent that you do, you, this is the time when you can recognize it. You've done a lot of studying, you've done a lot of davening, soul searching. At this point you say, these are the changes that I want to make, so to speak. What, well, these are the, the bricks in the wall that I am putting in the, uh, the, the temple, my personal temple that I am building to Hashem. Thank you.